Welcome back to SnowRunner, guys, and this is the publicly available version of the IV K100A. Now, this truck is obviously done by Puppy Master, who is the creator of the massive, massively widely used Heavy Wrecker. And, of course, not just the Heavy Wrecker, but the Normal Wrecker as well. Now... This vehicle is designed to be a more vanilla-focused vehicle. However, it does have some higher-powered engines, but it's not going to be anywhere near as over-the-top as, for example, the Heavy Wrecker is. Now, the point of the K100A is to be a console-friendly cab-over rig that is based on a classic old-school design that can basically hold its own against all of the other highway trucks in the game, as well as have a little bit of off-road capability. Now, one of the interesting things about this rig is that I think it'll be really, really well at home on a new highway map that is being worked on by Remo. Now, obviously, if you're watching this video a little bit later on down the road and that map has since released, we will probably have used this vehicle on that map. But if you're watching this video right when it goes live, that's definitely something that I think this truck is going to be very, very good for. So let's go ahead and fire it up, take it into the garage, and see what we can do with it, and also kind of put it through its paces a little bit here on these summer testing grounds. So let's fire it up and see what it can do. Actually starts up really, really quickly. A little bit of flex to the uh, to the chassis, but to be fair, these trucks do have that. You know what I mean? Now there is a known issue with this truck where the textures will not cache very quickly, um, and it basically gives you that impression that they take forever to load. Uh, it's a known issue, and Puppy Master is trying to work it out and figure it out. Now, first up is the engines. Now, the engines basically work on a simple three-tier system, good, better, and best. Your good engine is going to be about an A power to weight rating, and that is definitely going to put you in the same performance realm as a standard vanilla truck. The better is going to put you at an A+, which is still definitely within vanilla game balance, and best is going to put you at an S power to weight rating. Not an S+, though. So, they all will put you in that, that standard vanilla game balance, but they really do work on the same scale that most of the other highway and hauling trucks do in the standard game. But unlike the normal highway trucks, you can see this one has a front drive axle underneath it, which is really, really nice. Let's go ahead and throw the best engine underneath it. And gearbox-wise, we have balanced, high range, and off-road. We're going to start with off-road, and then we're going to work our way up to high range as we get later on in the test. So we'll go with off-road now. And suspension-wise, we have base, and then we have active. We're going to go with the active for sure, because I really want that adjustability. Now, in terms of tires, we have a standard assortment of highway tires, but it actually goes up a good bit in size very quickly. It goes straight from 39 to 49. However, the 49s are only available if you opt for the active suspension, so keep that in mind. Now, I do like the highway options. I definitely think that the HMD2s are probably my favorite in terms of the highway category. But moving on to all-terrains, you have, once again, 39s and 49s, and I think the ATMD2s look amazing. Now, in terms of the off-road category, you have OHD1, OHD2, and OHD3, and they are both available in, of course, 39 and 49-inch sizes. Then it goes on to the chain tires in 39-inch OHD2 all-chains and 49-inch OHD2 all-chains. So I'm going to go with the 49-inch OHD... Mm, probably 49-inch OHD2s, to be honest. I like them a lot. And I kind of, on one hand, I kind of wish that there was a mud tire option, but at the same time, I also know that this truck isn't designed for mud, and if you want to blast through mud, you should use the Heavy Wrecker and not this. So it kind of defeats my own argument, but that is what it is. Now, let's go to winches now. We've got default, longer, longer and stronger, R&D offline, and just stronger. So we'll do the IX R&D offline, which is all the power, console-friendly reach, does not require a truck to be running, meaning it's fully offline. Now, once again, the texture issue is still definitely going on. I don't know why those textures have not loaded themselves yet. Uh, very weird issue with this truck. Spare wheel-wise, we'll definitely go ahead and put it on because I would if I was using it out in the field. And snorkel-wise, I'm going to go with the probably the tall front-facing. And frame add-ons, this is where it gets very interesting because you can have a front log carrier, LP4 log loading crane, flatbed, van body, metal detector, sideboard, fuel tank, and LC 3.8 loading crane along with, of course, your saddle high and saddle low. Now, I'm going to go with a log setup to start off, and I definitely think that this truck would work well uh, with a logging setup. I think the just the overall attitude and setup of the truck really lends itself well to logging. And front side-wise, we have the external blinkers, which we're going to go ahead and put on. Rooftop-wise, you 
got a raised beacon, which we'll put on, but probably not use. And then front bumpers, we have trapezium, defender, flathead, stock, and K or IV K100A heavy bumper. I'm going to probably go with the heavy bumper because that'll help keep the front end down. And miscellaneous wise, we also have external horns we could do. We also have the IX family pack, which is basically all of these different mod creators have a have their own little card that hangs from the mirror, including our good buddy Diesel Addict. It's so cool that we actually have a card for Diesel Addict that we can hang from the, the mirror right there. You have one for D&D Modding, uh, Fox CRF 450 Rider. You have one for Fred Swain and Hash Welder and uh, IXSE, JBE. Basically, like, all of these different all of these different uh, mod creators and known community members have their own cards in this mod pack. So super, super cool. I love it. You even have ones for Rexy and Risky. And honestly, I'm really, 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 really glad that we have these out here available to us. So really cool nod to the community there. And I really am glad that that is available to us. And I'm sure that these could end up making their way to consoles at some point. We got to rep Diesel Addict because I just love the fact that we've got him on a card that we can hang from the mirror. I think that's so cool. We're going to go with the Slant Cut Stacks and OHD... We'll go with OHD wheels too. And you've got a couple of different... Uh, oh, oh, oh. Those are not loading properly. Uh, and I, I'm sure they would load eventually. But I'm going to go with the standard red because I feel like the standard red will probably be the like the lowest amount of stress on this truck. And for, what it, for again, whatever reason, it seems to not want to load the textures very well. So we're going to go ahead and throw beans on the dash. And there are like accessories and curtains and stickers and exterior stickers that you can use. And oh, I love it. Oh my god, the standard in-game stickers actually work on the truck. So that's... That's really freaking cool. You can do one on the door and on the side. That's so awesome. Why is that harsh driver one big and this one is small? Never mind. Odd, but okay. And I'll throw probably like one more sticker on there. Uh, yeah, I dig it. Oh, God. A roof one doesn't really work, but all right. And let's see. The on fire one, it's kind of cheesy, but eh, don't worry about it. All right. Now it's finally time to go ahead and set this thing up the way we need it to be for some logging use. So let's go ahead and... Well, we don't really need the all-wheel drive on right now, do I? I guess I just, like, instinctively turn it on. But, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need to check this interior out a little bit more carefully. So now that we're in the interior, you got the full dash set up right here. All of your gauges and switches and air brake controls. And then you've also got your passenger seat area. You got beans right there. You got Diesel Addict's logo just chilling out. Hanging, actually hanging from the radio. That's really, really cool. Full sleeper in the back, by the way. This is nuts. This is, like, absolutely so sick. So cool. A little shelf up here. Whoa! It's a dual sleeper? Oh, that's so cool. You actually have, like, a view out the top, too. Oh, my God. I love that so much. Again, the attention to detail in a lot of these semi-trucks that have been dropping recently is, like, so freaking high. So freaking high on the attention to detail. Absolutely love it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and orient the truck so I don't have to worry about the trailer glitching. And we'll back it up, back it up, back it up. And let's see. Ooh. Let's see, log carrier rear. Let's go ahead and hook that up. And that should be good for a set of long logs. Easy does it. Bring it around. Hey, he did update the horn. Heck yeah, dude. All right, long logs. That was a little bit weird, but then again, the trailer wasn't fully straight right off the bat, so I, I get where that's I get where that's coming from. Okay, let me go ahead and change the weather up a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Much better view of the truck now. Much better view. Yeah, I could totally see this being a very, very widely used logging setup for a lot of people. And the nice thing about it is that this entire package is 100% console friendly. 100% console friendly. Classic cab over. What's not to love? Like, seriously, what's not to love about this setup? I absolutely freaking adore it. Absolutely adore this entire setup. And really, truly, I, I, I really don't think it could get any better. I really don't think it could get any better. Genuinely, bro. All right, let's make our way across the river. Test number one. We'll throw it in high. This is also the low-range gearbox, though, so high range shouldn't be all that fast. It shouldn't be fast enough to where it's, like, spinning all its power away. Pretty good. Pretty dang good, I've got to say. Now, I know it's not going to be a mud monster, but I do want to go ahead and actually raise the suspension up. 
And oh, that's way better. That's definitely the height I would haul at if I was using uh, this big of a tire underneath uh, underneath this thing. So let's see. There we go. We were getting a little bit of wheel spin there because we were on some uneven ground. But you will have to actually use the lockers in places where it would be realistically acceptable to use the lockers. Not going to attempt the hill climb with the log trailer because I feel like it probably wouldn't like me all too much if I did that. But let's go ahead and check in on Beans. How you doing, bud? Hey, he's all good. Don't worry about it. All right. Mud test now. Now, I know we're not using the ideal mud tire setup, but once again, I mean, this is about as good as we could do. So let's put it in low plus and turn the lockers on. Now, this is once again designed to be more vanilla balanced, so I completely understand if it doesn't do super well in the deeper mud, but this particularly like shallow mud, it's doing really, really well. And actually for running a kind of a more generic off-road tire and not quite a mud tire, uh, I, I really have absolutely no complaints at all. I really think it's doing a wonderful job. And there's something about lumber behind a cab over that is just so classic and so cool to see. I mean, it really is one of those things where it's like, that is American trucking right there. That's, it's like a classic cab over with logs behind it. There is nothing about that entire picture that isn't like just, you know, just so centric to, you know, classic American trucking. And I absolutely love it. I mean... Looking at this picture right here is just like, oh my god. I gotta get a closer look at that because, oh wow. There's just something about it, man. There's just something about it that is just so right. You know what I mean? There's something about that setup. Something about the way it looks. Something about the way it makes me feel considering the fact that I used to see these trucks all the time hauling lumber as a kid or at least similar looking trucks hauling loads of lumber just like that you know when I was growing up and it really does bring those memories back of seeing these trucks go by on the highway seeing these trucks go by the, on the highway right outside my old house and I remember waiting you know waiting by the road to see these trucks go by because I liked it so much I just wanted to see them I just wanted to see them go by I wanted to hear the engines I wanted to hear their horns you know every once in a while when they would be you know when they would be really cool and actually just blow the horn whenever they would go by the house it was like just such a cool memory and you know looking at this truck right now really is giving me mad nostalgia for sure absolute mad nostalgia now let's actually go over to the dips obstacle and see how it does over there i don't think it's going to be you know super over the top performance but once again it's not designed to be so that's not what we're going for here that's not the idea that we're going for that's not the that's not really the overarching uh, thing we're trying to achieve with this truck. And that's not what Puppy Master was trying to achieve either. Puppy Master was trying to achieve a console-friendly, classic cab-over design that would slot into the standard game balance very, very well. And while it is definitely a change for his modding style, I think he has done a tremendous job with it. Now, those of you that actually got a chance to check out the development version on some of my live streams will definitely be happy to know that this is, as of right now, uh, as of recording this video anyway, it is fully available on the PC version of the game and hopefully will be making its way to consoles pretty dang soon, as soon as it gets approved. Come on! Come on, K100A, let's go. Oh, no. Yeah, low minus is the place to be in here. Oh, God. Oh, my God. The fact that we didn't roll over right there is mind-boggling to me. Needed a little bit of a winch assist, but that's all right. We need those sometimes. We all need a little bit of an assist from time to time, I guess, with winches. Come on. I don't like this line. I feel like this line is going to ruin me. Oh, no. Do not roll it over because you will spend, like, hypothetically, you could spend hours trying to get it back onto its wheels and still just turn it over every time. All right, let's see what we can do. Easy. Yes! Oh, my God, yes! We made it happen, boys. Repair and refuel. And now we're getting the, uh, I guess it's G1 is the highway box. Yep, definitely the highway box because it's an 8-speed. Well, we might not have our logs anymore, but we're still going to go ahead and go over to the bridge jump and see what this thing could do. Now, with an 8-speed, I do think it'll be fast enough to get some distance, but I don't know if it's actually going to be able to clear the barrels. Clearing the barrels is probably out of the question for it. I think it's probably going to land on the barrels, but it might not go over them. I think it's going to land on them, not, not go over them. That's my, um, 
That's my assumption. But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't always go that way. Wow, high is like the equivalent of fifth. The top three gears are pretty locked out unless you're like really getting after it or going downhill. But also you got to think the crane does add a lot of weight. So that's also probably part of that equation. Let's make our way up the hill. Almost there. All right, let's go. Le oh God, holy crap. That got really uneven real quick. Seventh. Yep, second we start going downhill, it was okay with it. And full send! Oh my god, right into the barrels, but you know what? It actually, it is, it got a lot of damage, but the fuel tank is not fully damaged out, and neither is the suspension. That is crazy. But if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments below. Hit that like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. And I will see you guys next time. And don't forget to check out this truck. Thank you guys for watching.